Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this AP Chemistry video, we're going to wrap up Unit 8 by taking a look at Sections 8, 9, and 10. Now, that seems like quite a bit to handle in one video, but these are all about the same concept, the concept of buffer solutions. So, we're going to take a look at these. Now, we've already talked about buffers a little bit already in this course. We've already said that the buffers are a special type of acid-base mixture. Essentially, a buffer is what you get when you have a weak acid mixed with its conjugate base. Uh, now, likewise, it could also be a weak base and its conjugate acid. That essentially works out to be kind of the same thing. But the fact is, you got to have something like that. A weak acid, conjugate base, something like that. And the reason that we're going to create a buffer solution in the laboratory is because buffer solutions tend to resist pH change. There are certain reactions in the lab where you need to maintain the pH at a certain level in order for the reaction to take place effectively. So you'll possibly have put a buffer in there to maintain that fairly consistent pH. As an example of this, your blood has a buffer. And this buffer maintains the pH of your blood at about 7.4. Sometimes it goes a little bit higher or a little bit lower, but generally speaking, your physiological pH is very close to 7.4. So let's take a look at this example here. It says, which of the following mixtures would form a buffer? Once again, we're looking for something that has a weak acid and its conjugate base. That's automatically going to eliminate the second choice because that's a strong base and a weak base. So that certainly does not qualify. The answer is the third one, isn't it? Because acetic acid is a weak acid and then acetate ion would be its conjugate base. So that's the answer. Now what's wrong with the first example? Well, notice that sulfuric acid is not a weak acid, is it? It's a strong acid. And so this is actually not going to be an effective uh, buffer. It has to be a weak acid, not a strong acid, a weak acid, and its conjugate base. Now, the way that a buffer works is you have this, this uh, mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base. If you were to add acid to the buffer, the acid is going to react with the base in the buffer. And likewise, if you have a base that you add to the buffer, it's going to react with the acid. So essentially, no matter what you do, you can add acid to the buffer, you can add base to the buffer. Uh, either way, it's going to maintain pretty close to that same uh, pH. Now let's move on to section 8.9, which is about how to calculate the pH of a buffer. So here's an example. We may have a problem like this where it says a student obtains 250 milliliters of a buffer containing 0 0.60 molar hydrofluoric acid and 0 0.20 molar sodium fluoride. Calculate the pH of this buffer. Now there's an equation that we use for this. Now I'm not going to worry about deriving the equation for you, but this is called the henderson hasselbalch equation. And this is a very useful equation to help us to determine the pH of a buffer. Now, of course, the pH is, well, the pH of the buffer. The pKa is the negative log of the Ka of that weak acid. So you'll need to know or look up the Ka in order to solve that part of the question. Now, over here, the A negative concentration, that represents the concentration of the conjugate base in the buffer. Likewise, the HA in brackets represents the concentration of the weak acid in the buffer solution. So let's go ahead and, and use this equation to plug and chug and find the answer. So once again, we're solving for the pH. Uh, we're going to have to look up the Ka. I believe the Ka of hydrofluoric acid is 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. So that gets plugged in for Ka. And then in this other term, we have plus log and then the base the conjugate base is the, the fluoride, and that's where the 0 0.20 gets plugged in. And then the hydrofluoric acid is, of course, our HA. That's the acid part of this. So the 0 0.60 gets plugged into the denominator there. So now all we have to do is determine what this is equal to on our calculator. So the first term is 3.14. The log of 0.2 over 0.6 is negative 0.48. 
So when you compute this, you'll find that the pH of the buffer is 2.66. So it's a fairly straightforward problem. If you're uh, pretty good with your scientific calculator and are able to work with the logarithm button, then you shouldn't have any problem solving these problems. Let's try another example. This one might be a little bit tougher. This one says a chemist needs to produce a buffer with pH 8.00. If he has access to a solution of 0 0.50 molar hypochlorous acid, which has a Ka of 3.0 times 10 to the negative eighth, what concentration of sodium hypochlorite, NaClO, should be used in the buffer? So once again, we're talking about the pH of a buffer, so you want to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH equals pKa plus log of the conjugate base over the concentration of the acid. So we're just going to plug and chug in here. We know what the desired pH is. It's 8.00. So I'm going to plug that in for pH right there. Now the problem tells me what the Ka is. It's 3.0 times 10 to the negative eighth. So that goes in for Ka. So pKa is just the negative log of that number. Now in this other term, the, uh, the concentration of the base is what we are trying to find. We don't know what the concentration of the hypochlorite should be. So that's our unknown. Now in the denominator, we do know what the concentration of the weak acid is. It's 0 0.50. So that's going to go into the denominator. And now we just have an algebra problem to solve. Sometimes it seems a little bit harder because we do have uh, a logarithm to deal with, but we can still work our way through that. So on this term here, the negative log of the Ka is 7.52. So I'm going to go ahead and evaluate that. And I'm trying to isolate the variable, so I'm going to subtract 7.52 from both sides. And so I get 0 0.48 equals the log of the base over 0.5. Now to simplify this further, I'm going to take the anti-log of both sides. That's what your 10 to the x button on your calculator is. So that's going to get rid of this log here on the right side. I'll have to take the anti-log of 0.48. So I find that 3.00 equals the concentration of the base over 0 0.50. And so now to solve for the unknown, I just have to multiply 3 times 0.5. And so the answer is 1.50 moles per liter. So that is the desired concentration of sodium hypochlorite I would need in order to have that buffer right around pH 8.00. Now, as you look at the equation, you might realize that uh, Ka for an acid at a particular temperature is not really going to change. It, it's fairly non-negotiable if you're dealing with a certain acid. But you might notice that it is a little bit negotiable to change the ratio of the base to the acid. And if you're a little bit mathematical in thinking, you might realize, well, hang on here. If the base is 1.5 molar and the acid was 0.5 molar, that's just a ratio of 3 to 1, isn't it? So what would happen if we just changed the concentrations and maintained the same ratio? What if instead of using 1.5 molar base and 0.5 molar acid, we just used solutions that were more dilute? like 0.03 molar hypochlorite and 0.01 molar hypochlorous acid. Would that give us the same pH? Well, yes it would. Because as long as the, the ratio of the base to the acid is 3 to 1, we're going to have the same pH, aren't we? So maybe you're wondering, why don't we do that? Why don't we just make all of our buffer solutions have very dilute concentrations? That way we still have the same pH, and we don't have to worry about spending more money to make more concentrated solutions. Well, there's a problem with that. And this is where section 8.10 comes in. This is an idea called buffer capacity. And the fact is, the more dilute your solutions are, the less they're going to be able to withstand the addition of acid or base. That's the buffer capacity. So the idea here is that using higher concentration buffer components, like that 1.50 to 0.50, as opposed to 0.03 and 0.01,
while keeping the ratios constant, will keep the pH at the same level, but it's going to increase the capacity of that buffer to neutralize added acid or base. So that's why when we're making a buffer, if you really wanted to, to neutralize a significant amount of added acid or base, you're going to make the concentrations a little bit higher while keeping that ratio the same. Like in our example earlier, it was a 3 to 1. Now, if you find a buffer that has more conjugate acid than base, then that buffer is going to be able to absorb more base without changing its pH significantly because that acid, that conjugate acid, is going to react with the base. Now, on the other hand, if you have a buffer with more conjugate base than acid, it's going to be able to significantly absorb more acid because likewise, the base is going to react with the acid without changing its pH significantly. So if we roll back to the example that we just had here in our last example, we see that the base was 1.5 and the acid was only 0.5. So is this particular buffer going to be more effective at neutralizing acid or base? Well, you can see that since there's more base, it's going to be better at neutralizing acid because base reacts with acid. So hopefully you can see the concept behind buffer capacity here. I hope you learned something about buffers and about acids and bases. If you did, go ahead and slam that like button. And I hope to see you in my next video where we're going to move right on to Unit 9, which is about applications of thermodynamics. Join me then.